Yeah, Jeff, uh, just some uh, giving the injury updates on uh, Grace. Uh, Grace uh, will be out through the weekend. I'll have a, I'll, I'll, if I have a better timeline, I'll let you know, but it'll be out through the weekend. Have you called anybody up yet? Or? Uh, not yet. And uh, Rasmussen wasn't out there, was he? Um, no, not injured. Uh, illness. We've got illness running through our team, so he, he you know, I, I anticipate him ready for tomorrow, but obviously I don't know for sure until we get till tomorrow. And same with Stahl? Um, Stahl Z would be uh, questionable for tomorrow. Smith still day to day. Yeah, I saw uh, Stevens out of the, uh, the blue jersey. Uh, how close is he to being available? I would say um, I don't have a timeline yet. Uh, I think we just got to keep measuring his uh, his ramp up in terms of uh, where he's at. From a, you know, he hasn't been able to run or jump uh, so off the ice. He hasn't been able to fire those fast twitch muscles at all. Um, he's getting closer, but. You know, how, what does that mean? It just depends how quickly he can get his uh, body back into a spot where he'd be ready to, to play a hockey game. And, and, and that isn't any time in the, in the uh, near future. And just uh, with the, uh, the, the changes, uh, losing two defensemen at the trade deadline, are, are you still in the process of trying, just trying to figure out what the ideal pairings are? Are you still kind of uh, going through different scenarios, different pairings, or trying to find the right mix? Uh, yeah, um, you know, we've obviously, we've got an injury with Danny DeKaiser too. Uh, he's still on the IR. Um, so we just, uh, you know, we're, we're working through, when you get to this time of year, some guys don't feel 100%. We're working through some of that um, and, and trying to see what the right mix is with the parents, correct? And uh, just how would you assess Ronix playing this season? I mean, has he pretty much been the same as he seen progress or well, I think anybody you know ebbs and flows during a season and, and I think he's gone through stretches of playing uh, good hockey for us and, and um, certainly I thought uh, um, you know the the last bit he's he's had a lot of good stretches obviously last night was a, a game where uh, you know I, I would see a couple of things went against him but I, I think overall he's played good hockey for us um, uh, you know, when he's playing well, he's 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 taking what's given, and I think that's the biggest uh, you know thing message I've had with him is let's take what's given, let's not overcomplicate it. If there's a a great play to be made, make the great play. If there's a simple play to be made, make the simple play, and uh, that's when he plays his best. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. John Keating. Jeff, how much are you uh, bracing yourself for uh, for the Lightning, uh, who have uh, lost three in a row and now are um, uh, out of the top three? We certainly know uh, Tampa's a great team. Um, you know, obviously they're back-to-back -back cup winners for a reason. They've added, you know, I, I think significant pieces here at the deadline. Um, you know, they're in a dogfight right now in terms of uh, who's able to kind of secure what spots. Obviously the playoff spots are, are, are uh, fairly determined, but who's able to uh, secure what spots is still up for grabs. And, um, you know, we faced uh, Tampa last time. They, they had a real tough night the night before against Pittsburgh. And so we, we certainly got an angry Tampa team that night as well. And uh, I thought uh, Ned made some big saves and in, in, uh, in allowed us to get to our game. I thought we played pretty good against them. We're 1 1 late in the second or late in the third, and they scored power play goals. So obviously, we got to stay disciplined. We got to stay out of the box. Uh, their power play is lethal. Um, and, and we got to try to play in five on five. Separate topic, where was uh, young Jeff Blaschel 25 years ago when the uh, Red Wings at Avalanche had their, uh, their tussle? Um, you know, I was, uh, I was, I don't remember exactly where, I remember watching it, but I don't remember exactly where, uh, I, I believe, uh, I, I can't tell you, you know, uh, John, there's lots that happens over the course of a lifetime, boy, it's hard to keep memories exactly straight, so even if I said it, it might not be the tr truth. But as a, uh, as a, as a guy who was following the team, how swept up were you in in some of that rivalry that was going on? I was a big fan, and and you know I think when you're a fan, you you you, you know you you have those uh, moments of uh, of euphoria when when the team does well. You have those uh, you know tough moments when the team doesn't do well. And obviously through that grind through the '90s, uh, late '80s and early '90s, there was some great moments and some heartbreak moments. And um, uh, you know, I had watched the series the year before um, as a fan, and, and and so that was a that was an unbelievable moment. You know, it's it's 
it's played here uh, a lot, and, and I've seen it over, you know, played a lot, but it, it deserves it. It's really, a, uh, I think, uh, just one of those kind of lightning rod moments for a team uh, and probably for the organization, ultimately, given what happened after that, you know, and, and um, uh, certainly, you know, anybody I'm sure that was in the building, I'm sure there was 100,000 people in the building that night, but anybody that was in the building, uh, what, what a moment that would have been. But as a fan, it was a great moment. Should we be a little concerned that the 90s were a bit of a haze to you? <laughs> you should be concerned that uh, uh, yesterday is a bit of a haze to me. <laughs> Thanks, Flash. Ted Colton. Uh, how important are these games down the stretch here, Jeff, for some of the younger guys? I mean, they're going to see, you know, teams like Tampa, Pittsburgh, Boston, Carolina, they really are going to be hungry and they're going to be almost in playoff mode because they need these points. Is it going to be a good test for a lot of these guys? 100%. You know, we've got a lot of guys that are trying to prove that they can help this team and this organization uh, uh, start winning on a, on a more regular basis. And, and, you know, through the early part of the year, the first whatever half or whatever the year, we were able to keep it, uh, you know, we hovered around 500 most of the year and kept ourselves in the, in the mix. Um, and then we've fallen off that. So now you've got however many games we have left, 18 games left to, to – you know, in some young guys with injuries are in even more prime roles. So, so are you going to help us win or are you just going to be a guy who can go out and play? And there's a huge difference. And, you know, we had challenges last night. Obviously, Matthew Barzell had a good night last night. And if you're a young guy, you got to find ways to, to shut him down and, and make him defend and make him have a bad night. And, and it's going to be the same, obviously, uh, you know, tomorrow. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a number of good players. It's impossible to shelter uh, every guy, you guys are going to have to go out and play against good players like you do when you have, when you go on the road against Pittsburgh again. And, and you know, obviously opposing coaches are are looking and saying, okay, can these young guys handle it? And and we get a chance to, and we're not going to be perfect every night. There's going to be some nights where it goes right, some nights where it goes wrong, but hopefully over the course of these 18 games, guys take more steps forward than steps back and they, they, they get themselves in position uh, to, to make sure that they're uh, a player who can help us win in the, in the future. And what's the difference between games this time of year and maybe earlier in the season? Are they just a little tighter and tougher, I guess? Or yeah, yeah, the word, the word you hear talk is, about the tighter. Yeah, the word you hear is ramped up. You know, like the, everything kind of gets ramped up. Certainly, um, most games, you know, as you get into playoff type hockey, it's it's not loose at all. Uh, turnovers uh, crush you uh, more even than in, in the early part of the year. The scoring seems to go down. Um, I don't know if there's less penalties or not. I can't answer that, but but the scoring seems to go down, and uh, and you gotta you gotta you gotta make sure that you play winning, efficient hockey. And it's something we've talked about all season that we haven't been good enough at. But certainly, something from a messaging standpoint is we got to continue to grow into a winning type hockey team, meaning you're able to create offense without you giving them much up, and that is not easy to do. But that's the only way you win in the long run. So if you got to take high risk plays all the time to to, to create offense, you're not going to win enough because you're going to have too many uh, too many negatives involved. So you got to try to create offense while checking great. You got to you know ultimately check for your chances, and and uh, the more we can learn to do that, uh, the better uh, position we'll be in for success in the future. Sounds good. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yep. Yep. Last question, Max Bowman. I don't know if this number held up, but I think I saw Cider play 28 minutes last night. Sometimes the numbers get changed by a little bit. How did you think he handled that kind of workload? I didn't know that. Um, I didn't look at the game sheet after. You know, I think part of that is is skewed a little bit in the sense that uh, late in the game, uh, you know, we pulled the goalie for a long period of time. And so then they end up out there that whole time. Um, you know, they also had two very, very long. He would have also had two very long shifts on the power play, basically a, a two-minute plus uh, on the first one, we went five on three in, in, in the next one. So the minutes get a little bit skewed. Um, I, I thought he played solid last night. I thought he played good last night. Um, you know, it, it sides is similar to, to Phil Aronic. It just We just got to keep learning how to uh, take what's given. And, and you know, when you have the ability to make a little more happen, uh, sometimes you, you, you try to force uh, things. And, and, and what sides has to do, like Phil Aronic, is um, if there's a great play to be made, make it. And if there's a simple play to be made, make it. And, and that's a that's a learning process for young defensemen. And he's he's uh, in a similar boat that way. And then what did you think of Chase Pierce? I know you kind of only got brief snippets of him along the last couple of years, but I, I thought Chase did a solid job. You know, went in and, and did his job. Um, uh, he forechecked pretty good. Uh, 
Um, he was he was solid defensively, and, and he did a good job. So, um, you know, I, I thought that was a great, great moment for him. Um, I'm glad he got a chance to play. Uh, we'll see what the future brings, but uh, I thought he did a good job. Do you have a rooting interest in this uh, NCAA hockey tournament? Uh, well, certainly uh, Western Michigan would be for two reasons. Obviously, I had a chance to coach there. and There's some great, great people there. But probably most importantly, because my friendship with Pat Frischweiler and the job he's done has been outstanding. And, and I know they're playing right now, so let's hope they're, they're holding on to this lead. They're up one hour. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's all for us today. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you.